All right. We covered last time an overview of Google Analytics. Uh, my name is Kyle Bailey. I own Front Burner Marketing, and I do a lot of speaking and presentation and consulting on a lot of online marketing uh, tools, techniques, tips. Also, I spend a lot of time talking about the sales process, especially vis-a-vis -vis online tools. And if you're going to talk about the sales process, you're really talking about human behavior. And one of the most powerful, definitely probably the most powerful free tool there is for uh, understanding human behavior online is Google, Google Analytics. One of the things I'm going to show you that's really strong for business that people, I think most business owners are just not aware is out there uh, at this price point, which is free, <laughs> uh, is user flow. So after you sign into, into Google, Anal Google Analytics, you, you click on your site, you're going to come up to this dashboard. Scroll down a bit over here on the left. This is what the dashboard looks about, like on the left. Scroll down to the bottom of this little bullet point list. You'll see user flow, user's flow. We're going to click into that. It is going to load. All right. So now what you see here is the pages people visit. So uh, you can see all these titles. This is a periodontal site. So they deal a lot with um and all kinds of dental issues but you'll see contact us about us team okay so let's just take contact us um this is in comparative mode which in the last video i explained is right up here this is comparing the uh the months the current month the the, the previous 30 days to the 30 days before that so it's comparing march 21 to april 20 it's comparing that time period to the time period of Feb 18 to March 20. Hopefully that makes sense. So uh, the really nice thing about this is this gets really complicated and can get really confusing, especially if, you, if, the, if you're looking at this for the first time. But it's, it's much more simple than it looks. Uh, what it's basically telling you is where uh, page visits came from and then where they go to. Okay. So we're going to highlight this one. I can see this one has a nice string on it. When you mouse over it, it gives you this. So you can see this periodontal treatments, dental implants, one page, and you can see the two months side by side, what the visits were. Okay. But when you click on it, it gives you this option right here. It gives you obviously all three of these, but this is the important one for what I'm talking about right now. Once you click this, it's going to show you this nice little graphic of the landing page somebody came in on first to come before this page. Okay. So I like this one came in on technology. And you can see as I mouse over that, uh, let's see, let's pull this over a little bit more. So they hit the technology page. And we had zero in the first month set. Uh, 0, 05 and then 4 of 18. I'm not going to get into that part of it right now, but it was a big increase, as you can see, by the 500%. And then they come in to periodontal implants. Then we can go over to our next set. Now, this is where it gets interesting because after the second interaction, technically speaking, this is the first interaction, okay? They, but I really look for what they first went to off of the home page. I don't want to get too hyper technical here, but Google has kind of cloaked the home page. They don't, there's no name on this page. This is just United States traffic. But this right here, both of these are considered like the home page. Okay. So you see how this, this, this right here has a title. That's what this tag is right here. Periodontal implants. And you can see it in the little pop up there. That's the title of the page. Well, you can see this has no title. It's just empty. Above where it says 31 pages there, it's empty. That's because Google is cloaking that. They're doing that for a lot of reasons I'm not going to get into. But essentially what it boils down to is um, 
trying to dissuade fraud. That's all I'm going to get into because it's far more complicated than that. Um, so we see they come down, come into periodontal implants. They came straight into technology. Now, what this tells you is these people came in first to the, the slash technology page. Okay, that's a really important detail. You've got some other pages down here too. These are really important pages to explore because people hit that first. They hit that from search. They went to Google, they typed something in, and they came to those pages first before they came to the home page. That is powerfully important information. That that is a much more targeted search. Okay, somebody uh, went to that page going for something very specific. They found on the Google search return page called a SERP, S-E-R-P is in Paul, S-E-R-P. So when someone goes to a search engine, types in a keyword, hits that and goes to the page on your website, that is like fire alarm gold information. You you have to make use of that information. The next best thing is where they went to next. So they went to the technology page, which is about the types of technology that this uh periodontist uses some lasers and some laser guided surgery, some really cool stuff to, uh, to affect some periodontal treatments. And so it went straight from there to the dental implants page. Okay. And then from there, you've got a pretty nice little shotgun spread to back to the technology page, which is important. That means some people, they went here, then they went back to technology. And most likely, without even looking, I can I'll, I'll bet you that some of these people went back to the homepage. Because remember, a lot of these folks came in here and never went to the homepage. So this is why it's really important to have what I call top line navigation on all your pages, and that's a nice facet of a WordPress page uh, that people are always going to have access to your homepage. They're always going to have access to a nice cross section of your pages from any page on your website. There are exceptions to this. I'm not gonna dig too deep into that right now. But uh, in general, they're, they're gonna be able to move around your website very easily, and this is why it's so important. You wanna see, you can see all these interrelated lines in here. I can go into any single one of these, click on it. Um, let's see, why can't I get into that? There we go. Okay, so now I can go to patient resources here. Bam, I can see where they went into. I go to here, I can see where they went into. You can see there's a giant column coming off of the home page here into contact us. Much higher click rate on this. And this is what I was just referencing that, you know, some of these folks are going uh, like about us team and this other page down here, this group of 20 other pages then they're going from there to the contact us page. They go from there to the home page. See, these are home page visits right here. So what's that telling you? That's telling you they came in from the search page. They click something they liked, but they went to one of these. I can go down here and I can look at the group details. So this is going to do a breakout of all 20 of those pages. See, so it even tells you how many per. And this, of course, again, is we're in comparative mode here. If you don't have comparative mode on, you're only going to have one of one column instead of two. So this is giving you all the uh, visits per each one of these pages. Here's the page title on the left. Here's the number of visitors on the right. So you can see there's this big pile of visitors who are packed into this little 20 page um, section. They went now. They have not visited the home page at this point. That's very important. They came straight in here from search. They went to the contact us page, and then uh, looks like thirty of them went back to the home page. So then we can go. The majority of those fell off there. The, those that didn't went back down to this packet of twenty among some others, you can see that there are almost no single dedicated lines. There are many lines that come in here. So if I highlight traffic through here, well, what is this? Well, I can do that. Oh, that's right, because it's a pack of 20. It's not a single page. Okay. So uh, let's do it through here. This is, has a nice cross-section. You can see a bunch of different pages 
through here. And um, so about us, our integrated approach, that's what this page is about. And that page is about how the, the dentist uses a lot of different disciplines and combines them. So it's a really natural place to go to this pack of 20 pages, this uh, technology back to the dental, the, the lasers and things like that. And again, look here, they go back to the home page again. So people are going to go to the home page to see uh, overview things, general information about the site, contact information. Sometimes you have to understand your user is your user going to uh, most, most users now understand there's going to be a contact us page. One of the techniques I use with my clients is I make sure that in every page of the footer, there's a full slate of contact details, name, address, phone number. It's called NAP info. Make sure that's in your footer. Make sure your phone number's up at the top, top right. That's where people expect it to be. You can lose conversions, lose calls and lose sales by having your phone number top left instead of top right, because people expect it top right. It's like having a search bar top left. People expect search bar top right. It's an expectation people have developed over nearly a generation of internet use now. There has been a best practice set. So watch your customer behavior. One of the things you can do is do split testing. Um, put the search bar on the left for a month and for 30 days test how that affects your searches on your website. Put your phone number on the left, see how it affects your calls. Put it on the bottom, put it on the middle. Color it red, color it blue. Uh, put larger headshots on your homepage. See how that affects uh, your customer customer behavior or your visitor behavior, technically speaking. Um, this is user's flow. Uh, you can add, you can go really deep into this. You can really go kind of Stanley Kubrick and really kind of dive off, dive off into the rabbit hole in this. You can get down into eighth and ninth interactions. And what's helpful about that is once you get down to the 10th interaction, I can click on this highlight. This is a visit to the home page that's come back through here. Okay. This is interesting. Let's do this one. Okay. This is a drop off, but this is now the seventh interaction. This is gum disease treatments. So they, and the nice thing about here is you're down to one. Um, this is very analogous to what's called the long tail. It's not as relevant a, an idea anymore, but it is something that's interesting to read. Uh, I believe the author's name is Chris Anderson. It's called the long tail. It's a very good read, especially if you're new to this. If you're new to marketing, online marketing, you're trying to do this yourself or just trying to get a good overview, especially, especially historically. Um, because really, if you, if you think about where we are now, if you, if you think about the internet really as a toddler in the late nineties, it's now a 40 year old man. It knows who it is, what it is. Pretty much everything's working. It's rock and rolling. It's fully mature and very functional. So we've done, <laughs> we've come all that way and per, pretty much uh, like Amer if you compare it to American history, we've packed 200 years of history into about 17, 18 years. Uh, and really since mobile has hit, it's really just turned everything on its, on its, on its head. So you really have to understand your customer's behavior. That's a very important thing to understand. So when you get down here to one person, you, this person has gone through seven interactions and gone to this page. This is not coming in straight off a of search. That's what's so valuable about users flow is you can map the movement. Now you don't know who this is. The privacy is not an issue here because you don't know who it is, but um, you do know that one person stuck with you through uh, seven choices, seven movements on your, on your website. So they went through here, uh, through, we'll, we'll get into group details here. The, 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 one of the downsides is you can't really tell where the movement was here, which one of these it was, but you know, it was one of these, 
They came there from technology. Technology is a very popular page on this website. People like lasers. What can I say? This is another group page. You know, you're going to have to dig down to the group details. And again, you're not, you're not going to know every single one. I think Google will get better about that as they go. But this one came through another group through two groups, actually. So three groups into technology into another group set and then uh, about the team and then the periodontal treatments. So that's a really good example of how users flow can help you understand your audience better. So through each one of these movements, you need to go through and dig into that page and see, could the find customer find what they wanted? Was it readily available? And how can you make their experience better? I hope this has helped you. If you have any questions, you can always contact me through the website information uh, in this video or in the description.